Hello everybody and welcome to my herb running guide. Now a lot of people ask me about farming, they want to get into it, uh, but it's a bit complicated to get started. However, what most people actually want to do when they start training farming is to uh, do herb runs because they are extremely profitable and very passive. So today I thought I would make a specific herb running guide. I'm going to be starting from a level 3 account and showing you how to build an account that can do herb runs. Once you get the hang of it, it's really easy, but we're gonna be doing a step-by-step -step guide for those who really have not gotten into farming too much. In the video, I start from zero GP, but if you have about 500K, that will help out quite a bit, but definitely not necessary. Anyway, guys, hope you enjoy and let's get started. So first up here, we need to do a few quests. These are not absolutely necessary, but I would highly recommend doing them. Uh, the one quest we need to complete is Fairy Tales Part 1, but you'll also need to complete Priest in Peril, Restless Ghost, Lost City and Nature Spirit as they are prerequisite quests. So for Lost City we need to get level 36 woodcutting and level 31 crafting. So we went ahead and grabbed level 36 woodcutting. This really should not cost you anything. Just buy an axe on the ground exchange, chop some trees, and eventually get to 36. We mostly made leather items all the way till level 31 crafting. This should be extremely cheap, only like 50 or 60k at most. And that is it. Those are the two main requirements out of the way. If you don't already have level 13 magic, I just went ahead and grabbed it because we will need magic to safe spot the Lost City boss, and it's just generally pretty useful. Alright, so we started off by doing the Restless Ghost quest. This is a prerequisite, so you will need to do it. Next up here, we finished up the Lost City quest, which is also a prerequisite for Fairy Tales Part 1 and will allow us to eventually get the Fairy Ring Teleport. Now next spirit completed Witch's House. This is optional, but I had really low HP on this account, so I decided to get it before I did some of the other quests. Not necessary, but if you need some extra HP levels, it's a really quick quest to complete. Another optional quest, if you have really low melee combats, is the Waterfall quest. Now the reason I am doing this is because to complete Fairy Tales Part 1, you will need some strength levels, and that is because the boss can only be damaged with melee and only with uh, Secateurs. And that's based off of your farming level or your strength level. And it's way quicker to get strength levels, so I just did the waterfall quest. Next up here, I completed the priest in peril quest. Once again, prerequisite. Getting us to level 15 prayer is also nice as well. Last up here is nature spirit, and that is the last of the prerequisite quests done. It will give you a few crafting levels, a few HP levels, and a few defense levels, which are going to come in handy considering uh, we're pretty low combat. So with our current stats, uh, we can kill the Tangle Root. Just keep in mind, it's going to take a while to safe spot him. It took me about 7 or 8 minutes of just flinching it. Uh, so if you don't want to do this, I would get higher uh, combat stats. And that is it. We've completed Fairy Tales Part 1, which is the major quest we need to start doing farm runs. Uh, importantly, that'll get you from level 1 to 17 farming, uh, which otherwise will take quite a while, and we have access to the Magic Secateurs. The last thing you want to do is start Fairy Tales Part 2 and get to the point where you can use the Fairy Ring Teleports. You will not need any of the requirements for the quest. Just go ahead and start it, and it's about 10 minutes in. It won't take you very long at all, and it will unlock probably the most important thing in the entire game, which is the Fairy Ring Network. So now that we have finished Fairy Tales Part 1, which is something you really just need to do before you start uh, herb runs. Let's quickly have a look at the requirements for different herbs. So the first one that is profitable and most people are aware of is Renar weeds and you might as well start growing them as soon as you get to 32. Even if you don't farm anything besides Renar weeds, you will slowly passively get your levels up pretty quickly actually. At 38 is Toad Flax which is also extremely good and pretty much everything else can be profitable but I would just recommend sticking to Renar weeds and Toad Flaxes at the beginning because they are the lowest level and are some of the more profitable herbs anyway. So to start doing herb runs, we need to get to 32 farming, and there's two ways to get there. There's the extremely lazy way, and the extremely cheap way. So the extremely cheap way is just doing regular tree runs. The first thing you want to start by planting is oak saplings, which can be planted at level 15, which we already have for completing the quest. And once you reach level 30, you'll be able to plant willow saplings, which will increase your XP even more past that. For the tree runs in your inventory, all you will need is a spade, and a rake, as well as a type of compost. Now, Ultra Compost is really cheap right now, and this is the highest tier compost, so I would always recommend using Ultra Compost. There are certain circumstances where it might not be worth it, but you're just generally best off planting with Ultra Compost every time. So from here, we just need to click on the patch, and we should automatically rake the tree patch. And once it's done raking, we're simply going to use an Ultra Compost on the patch, and then we're going to use an Oak Sapling on it. And hey, we already got a farming level. Easy as that. So we're just going to do the exact same thing in the Palador Park, where there is another tree patch. 
And we're going to do the exact same thing at the Taberly tree patch as well. And finally at the Lumberage patch. And that is pretty much the basics of an easy tree run. Those are four patches that pretty much everyone will have access to right away. So then you're just going to keep repeating that until you get to 32 farming. It'll probably take you two to three days. So if you really don't want to wait that long, next up is the Lazy Way. Okay, so the lazy way is a somewhat lesser known method and actually got a genie lamp somehow. Okay, we'll chuck that in farming, I suppose. And that is to build bushes and trees in your POH. Uh, first up here, we're going to go talk to our estate agent and go ahead and get a house. So yeah, we'll buy a starter house for 100 GP. That's all we need. From here, we can teleport right to our house. So you'll need around 500k to 1 mil for this method. This is the one I'm going to do just for the sake of speed. We have bought a Ring of Wealth on the Grand Exchange as well as some teleport to houses. So we're going to teleport to the Falador Park and in the park there is a woman selling different garden supplies. So the first thing you are going to want to buy is the Bagged Plant 1 and it costs 1000 GP each so it's kind of an expensive method. I'm going to buy 10 per world and hop just to save a little bit of coin. From here we're going to notice there are a few different plant squares and what we need to do is just right click on it and hit build. Hit 1 on the keyboard and you'll automatically uh, plant the bagged bush 1 or the bagged plant 1. And then we're going to right click and hit remove. And we're going to repeat that uh, until we reach level 10 construction. Now you could also do this all the way to level 31 farming if you wanted. Uh, because it will be more cost effective. But if you're going for speed at level 10 you want to move on to another plant. This is also really good for getting early game construction levels. Because we'll get the exact same amount of construction experience as we are farming experience. There we go, there's level 10 construction. I think we can now buy the nice tree or something like that. Okay, next up here we're going to buy the bagged nice tree worth 2,000 coins each. So I think you get the idea. I'm going to switch over to the bagged oak tree at level 15, and then I'm going to go all the way to level 32, and we'll come back once I get the required level. And there we are. There's level 32 farming. We can now grow our renar weeds, which was the whole point of this. So those are two easy ways to get to level 32 farming, and we have the magic secateurs as well. So we're pretty much all set to go. So now we're going to move on to the actual herb run, and let me just quickly explain my inventory. First up here we have our tools. Uh, we have the magic secateurs that we earned from the Fairy Tales Part 1 quest. This will give us an increased yield when we're harvesting herbs. We have the seed dipper, you actually need this to plant herb seeds. Uh, we have the spade, which you'll also need to dig up plants. And we have a rake just in case any of our weeds grow. I would always recommend bringing all three of these. You can equip the magic secateur just to save a bit on inventory. Next up here we have our compost. We have one compost for every seed that we plan on uh, planting. With absolutely no other requirements, you can pretty much get five herb patches right away. We have the Falador patch, we have the Arduin patch, we have the Port Phasmatis patch, the Camelot patch, and the Karend patch. And at the bottom here we have different teleports. These can all be used at level one. You can see my magic level is only level 20. So while I would recommend getting your magic level up as quickly as possible because it will save on money, until then you can use teleport tabs and different pieces of jewelry items. Now if you did end up using the POH method to get your farming to level 32, you will actually have enough construction levels to unlock a very close teleport to one of the farming patches, which I'm gonna do quickly now. So we teleported to Draenor and all we need to do is go to Karend. Uh, for the very first time. What that will do is it'll allow us to put our POH in Zaya, which we can then teleport to, which is reasonably close to the herb patch there. You will need level 25 construction to do this. If you don't have it, it's not a big deal. I would just skip the Zaya patch until you actually have that unlocked. So we've stepped foot on Karend. That's all you need to do. From here, we're just going to teleport back to Varrock, and we're going to go move our house to Karend. So we're just going to talk to the estate agent again, say, can I move my house, please? And we're going to pick Hosidius, which is near to the herb patch on Karend. There we go. Perfect. Okay, so that's all we need. We have everything in the inventory to start off a herb run. So it doesn't matter too much which order you do the teleports in. Let's start off with the Faldor patch. Now, a really easy teleport is to Draenor. From here, we're just going to run up a little bit to the northwest. And here is the farming patch. This is the most basic teleport location. An alternative is you can teleport to the Falador Park with the Ring of Wealth. Ideally, you would unlock the Explorer's Ring, which teleports you right there. Once we get here in the northeastern corner, there will be a herb patch. We need to rake the weeds for the very first time. Once they're done, we'll put down our Ultra Compost, and then we're going to plant our Renar Seed. And that is it. Simple as that, we just need to repeat that four more times. Your herbs will take on average 80 minutes to grow, so after an hour and a half roughly, you can come back and harvest the herb. Okay, from here we're going to teleport to Camelot. Once we're in Camelot, we're going to run to the southeast. We're running down to this farming patch here. 
Uh, the Camelot Teleport will be your best option for a long time. The only other viable option is the Lunar Teleport at level 87 magic. However, for most people, the Camelot Teleport is totally fine as you won't have to change your spellbook at all to do it. And it is reasonably close. Once again, Ultra Compost down and then hit the Renar Seed on the patch and we'll plant that one as well. Okay, from here, let's teleport to my house. Once your house is in Hosidius, you immediately just want to click on the portal, which will teleport you to the Hosidius house in Karend. From here, we want to walk a little bit to the east. Now, another good option for teleports is the Xerix Talisman, if you end up getting that. Other than that, though, the Karend home teleport is pretty good. Let's go ahead and rake the weeds, chuck down the Ultra Compost, chuck down the seed, and now we just have two more patches left. So from here, we're going to go to the Ardun patch. There's a ton of different ways to go here. A really easy one is to go to the Ranging Guild. From here, we're just going to run a little bit to the south, and we're pretty much at the patch. Uh, other good option is the Fishing Guild Teleport on the Skills Necklace. And our Dune Teleport, which will put you right here. Or the Ardune Cloak is ideal, which will teleport you directly to the Farming Patch. Alright, we're going to put down our Ultra Compost once again, and put the Renara Seed down. And now we just have one patch left. Now for the last patch, which is in Port Phasmatis, the easiest way to get there is with the Fairy Ring Code ALQ. So a really easy way to do this is if you use the teleport to my order, you can just go over to the fairy ring over here, just near the Legends Guild. If you are already in Edgeville when you start doing your herb run, I'd recommend doing the Port Phasmatis patch first because you can run right to the fairy ring here, do your herb run in Mauritania, and then teleport to the other locations. However, this order is pretty good as well. We're going to right click on the fairy ring and go to configure it. Go to ALQ and that'll teleport us to the northeast woods of Canifis. From here, we're going to run a little bit to the north. It's actually pretty close. Another pretty good option is the Ecto file. While it is slightly further, actually, it does not require the use of a fairy ring, which will save you a bit of time overall. So I'd recommend the Ecto file if you do have it. Let's plant our very last seed here. And that is it. That's how you do a really basic five patch herb run. After 80 minutes, you'll check back in and you'll start making money. Our herbs have fully grown, it's been around 80 minutes, so we're going to do the run in a slightly different way. We're going to start in Edgeville this time just to mix it up. You want to have the exact same inventory as before, and you want to make sure that you bring more Renar seeds to plant when you go to check on your herbs, because that is just the most efficient way to do it by far. Plant new seeds as soon as you go and harvest the old ones. From here we're going to run to the Fairy Ring just a bit east of Edgeville. We're going to go to ALQ once again. Now you want to make sure that you have your Magic Secateurs equipped when you harvest the herbs. They will give you an extra 10% yield, so it's very important that you have it equipped. So we're just going to click on the herbs and we'll start harvesting. Now I don't want to go too in-depth here because this is meant to be a beginner guide, but the two things that are going to affect your yield the most are compost and any extra items, mainly just the Magic Secateurs. So with Ultra Compost and the Magic Secateurs, you're guaranteed at least six Renar Weeds, but generally you will get more. So let's go ahead and use our Ultra Compost and plant another seed here. Let's just do a quick price check on how much a seed is worth. Uh, 35k, and let's put in all of the Renar Weeds right now. Uh, so 59k, so quite a good yield on that one. Now after every patch, you can right click on the Grimy Renar and use it on the Tool Leprechaun, and he will note them for you. So don't bother banking it. Perfect, so we have nine noted Renar Weeds. From here, we'll go to Karend. Now, as you start doing more and more farm runs, you'll realize that speed is pretty important. And now the things that will increase your speed the most are your teleportation method. I'll leave a link to the wiki that will show you the closest teleports to any of the other patches. As you start leveling up your skills more, you'll unlock more of these teleportation methods, which will really shave off a lot of time from your runs. Now we're at the Kren patch, we're going to go ahead and harvest it as well. Let's go ahead and plant another seed here. Once again, using the Renar Weeds on the Tool Leprechaun. From here, we'll go to Camelot. Now, there is a chance that your Renar Weed will die, but it is a pretty low chance, and it's not really worth worrying about. If you have a couple seeds that die on a run, it's not the end of the world overall, and on average, you're going to be making a lot more money back than you will when your seeds die. If you really don't feel like taking a risk, once you get to level 38, you can plant Toad Flax, which are also pretty profitable and a lot cheaper for the seeds. Once again, let's use the Renar Weed on the Tool Leprechaun. Next up here, we're going to go to the Ranging Guild for our Dune. Once again, our plant did not end up dying, which is nice. Eight herbs once again. We're getting pretty painfully average rewards, but that's probably good. And the last place we need to go to is uh, the Thaldor patch. We'll teleport to Draenor. Okay, so all five of our plants lived. Not that uncommon, but one or two do die sometimes. We're also going to get a quick farming level here. There's 33. So even though herbs don't give much experience, you will slowly accumulate farming levels. And the early levels will go by pretty quickly. Let's go ahead and price check all of the Renars we got here. So our total loot was 275k. Uh, the seeds costed 175k for five of them. 
plus a little bit for Ultra Compost. That being said, we made around 100k from a five patch farming run. Really basic, really easy, and something that every beginner account should start doing pretty much right away. Anyway guys, that is it for the video. I hope you learned something. If you did, definitely leave a like. I always appreciate it. If you have any questions, leave a comment down below and I'll try to answer them for you. Just keep in mind that once again, this was a basic farming guide. Obviously, there's a lot more to farming, more patches, uh, more teleportation methods, more items that you can use. But this is just a simple, standard, basic five patch run. Everyone can do it. Anyway, thanks for watching guys and I'll see you next time.